Good morning, church. I say good morning, church. Good morning. How many are thankful to be in the house one more time? Amen. Somebody somewhere didn't get this opportunity that we got this morning. So we come to praise him, to worship him, and to magnify. Come on, we praise, we praise. We praise you, oh Lord. Not only that, but we magnify we your name. magnify your name. Oh Lord, with humble hearts, we worship we you. We worship you, oh Lord. Oh, we magnify, we magnify. We magnify your name. We praise you, We praise you, everybody, come on. Magnify your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. And nobody else, but we magnify your name. We magnify your name. Everybody. Everybody. Clap your hands. All over the house, come on. Clap your hands. Everybody. Everybody. Clap your hands. Everybody. Clap your hands. Everybody. Everybody. Clap your hands. Everybody. Clap your hands.
to this place, ready to pray. See, as believers, we have to come to church ready to pray. Uh, we shouldn't have to be pumped. We shouldn't have to be primed. Yes, we shouldn't sir. have to be pushed. We should come into this place with a heart of worship already. I don't know about y'all, but we go from Sunday to Sunday, and the fact that we are sitting here in this place, we breathing, we're able to walk, we're able to talk, that's enough to praise the Lord. So for next Sunday, let us remember, come into here ready to praise all Ready. Amen. Woo. Will you all please stand for our call to worship? Our call to worship scripture will come from Psalms 34, verses 1 and 2. And the word of God reads, I will extol the Lord at all times. Uh -huh. His praise will always be on my lips. I'm going to read that one more time. It says, I will extol the Lord at all times. Ah. His praise will always, always be on my lips. Yes, sir. I will glorify in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Together. Amen. Together. Will you all birth, bow for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father God, we come to you this morning um, thanking you for blessing and watching over us and keeping us and getting us through this week, Heavenly Father God. Um, we come to you this morning with a heart of praise, Heavenly Father. We come to you this morning with a heart of thanksgiving, Heavenly Father God. We come to you with this morning with a heart of worship, Heavenly Father God. We pray and thank you for covering us and allowing us to come into your house to worship and to admonish you for who you are, Heavenly Father God, and for the things that you have done for us, Heavenly Father God. We pray that we don't take those things for granted, Heavenly Father God, because it's someone that did not wake up this morning, Lord, but yet we are still here breathing and able to call out to your name for the things that we desire and just to say thank you, Heavenly Father God. We pray right now, Lord, that as we usher your spirit into this place this morning, God, that you will ultimately have your way with us, Heavenly Father God. Open up our hearts, our minds, and our spirits Lord, to receive something that we may need this morning, Lord, whether it's a word from Pastor Scott, Lord, whether it's through a song that will encourage us and keep us going, Lord, or whether it's a hug from another member this morning, God, but whatever it is, Lord, we pray that we will leave out of here differently than what we came in this morning, Heavenly Father, God, and many of us came in here with burdens, stresses, and depression, and all sorts of things weighing on our hearts this morning, God, and we pray that you will give us the strength and the perseverance and the trust in you, Lord, that you will see fit that we overcome those things, God. We pray right now, Lord, that you will just cover Pastor Scott as he brings forth the word this morning, Lord. And allow the meditation to be manifested to your people, God. We ask that you continue to love on us, Lord. Continue to strengthen us, Lord. Continue to bless us, Heavenly Father, God. Even though oftentimes we are not deserving of those things, Lord. We thank you for everything that you are to us. We thank you for everything that you will do. And it's in your mighty matchless son Jesus' name we pray. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And we give you all the praise. Everybody shout it hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen. Amen. I just want to thank you.
This is the time and the place where we give God our praise. Everybody clap your hands. Let us get on one accord. Let us sing loud and rejoice. It's time to celebrate our King. Where we give God our praise. Everybody clap your hands. Let us get on one accord. Let us sing loud and rejoice. It's time to celebrate our King. Oh, are you ready to worship? Are you ready to worship? Do you love to worship? Do you love to you know that I came. I came to worship. Give me God the praise. Give me God the praise. Are you ready to worship? Are you ready to worship? Do you love to worship? Do you love to worship? You know that I came. I came to worship. Give me God the praise. Give me God the praise. Come on and clap your hands. Stop your feet. Come on. If you love him, make some noise, God in heaven is praying. Come on, and clap your hands. Come on, if you love him, stop your feet. If you really, really love him, make some noise, God in heaven is praying. This is the time and the place yes. where we give God. Praise everybody, clap your hands. Let us get on one accord. Let us sing loud and rejoice. It's time to celebrate our King. Oh, we need to worship. Are you ready to worship? Do you love to worship? Do you love to worship? You know Giving God the praise. Are you ready to worship? Are you ready to worship? Do you love to worship? Do you love to worship? You know that I came. I came to worship. Giving God the praise. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, if you love Him, stomp your feet. If you really, really love Him, make some noise. Let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the honor. Let's give him all the praise. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Come on and praise the Lord. Clap your hands. Come on and 
If you love him, stop your feet. If you really, really love him, clap your hands. Then clap your hands. Stop your feet. If you really, really love him, clap your hands. Young people, stop your feet. If you really make some noise, God in that will cry Woo! out and testify to the goodness of the Lord. But as the old yes, uh, saints would say, like, ain't no rock been through yeah. anything that I've been through. So I'm not going to let a rock take my place. I'm yeah. going to cry out and yes, I'm going to give God the Woo! praise that he is due. Amen. It is now time for us to worship God in the form of a prayer as we go to the Lord together to lay our burdens before the Lord. Now, the Bible says in Romans uh, chapter 8, Beginning at verse 26, it says, In the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, because we do not know what to pray for as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us uh, with unspoken groanings. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because he intercedes for uh, the saints according to the will of God. And here is the good news. We know that all things work together for good of those who love God, who are called according to to his purpose. You know, worship sometimes uh, we might take for granted, but if we truly worship the Lord and we take time to worship the Lord, all the things that we go through in life throughout the week and daily, uh, it will help us take our mind off of our problems and put our minds on Christ. Uh, and, and it will remind us that all things do work together. Or as James would say, that we can count it all joy. Uh, when we go through uh, trials and tribulations, knowing that the trying of our faith worketh patience and our trust is renewed and built in Jesus Christ. And so as we pray, uh, we want to pray for one another. Uh, also woke up this morning to uh, some news that there was a shooting downtown. Uh, there were four victims. Uh, I don't believe anybody died, but the fact that uh, we constantly in this country continue uh, to solve our problems with guns, uh, and with violence and hatred and evil, uh, it, it's just so disheartening. But we know that we serve a God that can uh, can answer all of our prayers, that can meet our needs, uh, and that he can uh, take care of things. If we would just lend it over to him, if we would give it to the Lord and let him take care of it, we know that uh, he can do better than we can. Amen? Amen. So if you would bow with me for a word of prayer. Eternal God, our, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you today, Lord. We Thank you this morning, God, and we come to you with bowed our heads and humble hearts to lift up your holy name, God. We thank you for this opportunity to, to speak to you, to commune with you, and to communicate with you this morning, God. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for another day. Uh, we thank you for new mercies that we are seeing on today, God. We thank you for just your continued love and your continued patience, your, your continued provisions over our lives, and Father God. We simply want to say thank you, God, for we know if it had not been for you on our side, we uh, would be lost. We would be incomplete. So, God, we simply ask believers in you say thank you this morning, God. We uh, thank you for uh, just being you, God. We thank you for, uh, for loving on us. Thank you for uh, continuing to watch over us, Lord. We say thank you, uh, thank you, thank you, Lord. We we had 10,000 tongues. We couldn't say thank you enough, Lord, but we know that it is you who woke us up this morning. It is, we know that it was you who clothed us in our right mind. We know that it was you who put clothes on our back and shoes on our feet. We know that it was you who sustained us throughout the week during Father God. So we simply say thank you, God. We lift up our sick and shut in to you. Uh, at this church, dear Father God, we uh, ask that you would just continue to lay your hand upon their bodies and on their minds, dear Father God. Whatever sickness that our loved ones, that our, our members may be dealing with, Lord, that is keeping them away from the house of worship, Lord, we pray that you would just touch and that you would heal in a way that only you can heal, dear Father God. We lift up those families, uh, those who were uh, injured last night in the shooting, dear Father God. We lift them up to you, God. We 
pray that you would touch the doctors who are working on them, dear Father God, and those who are uh, watching over them at the hospitals, dear Father God. Lord, we even lift up those who did the shooting, dear Father God, for they need you as well, dear Father God. We, uh, Lord, we lend this nation over to you, God. We give this nation and our problems over to you, God. We live in a world where uh, violence seems to uh, take over, where hatred and evil seems to, uh, to rule and reign, but God, we know that if we would just call on your name, that we would uh, look into the hills from which cometh our help, realizing that our help cometh from you, that, that this world would be better. But we as believers have to take a stand. We as believers have to lift you up. We have to be the beacon of light in this dark world if this world is going to change, dear Father God. So we give our problems over to you, God. We say, have your way, glory, Father God. Have your way, Lord, Lord. And the, have your way in our life. Have your way in our schools. Have your way in the church. Have your way in our communities, Lord. Let your way rule. Let your word reign. Let your, let, let your presence be felt in every aspect of our lives. Help us uh, to be the light that you have called us to be. Help us to shine a light in places where we know it is darkness, where we know evil persists in Father God, and let them know that there is a reality serving a true and a living God. Lord, we lift up our pastor to you, God. We thank you for his leadership. Thank you for uh, his teaching and his preaching. Every five Lord, we just ask that you would be with him, that you would touch him, that you would use him on today, God. Use him in a mighty way. Let us hear a word from you through him that we may be better, that we may walk in righteousness, that we may walk in holiness with you, dear Father God. We pray that all that we say and do in this worship experience, that the songs that we will sing, the prayers that we pray, that preach word that will go forth, and the worship that will be rendered, that you will be glorified, that you will be satisfied, and that you will be lifted up, and that we will be made better because we have been in your presence, Lord. We love you, we thank you, we adore you, we praise you, and we lift up your holy name. It is in your mighty master son, Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God say it together, amen. Lord. 
Lord. We know that this is the day the Lord has made, and we ought to be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. Yes, Amen. 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 Anytime we have a chance to come into his house, as uh, BJ say, we ought to come in praised up or prayed up. Amen. And give him all the honor and glory that is due him. This morning, we have a very special guest uh, with us, and I'm going to ask uh, Mary Lee Jordan Knox to stand. And Mary Lee, if, Mary Lee, if you continue to stand, if there are any other visitors, would you please stand? We would like to acknowledge all of our visiting friends today. Amen. 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 On behalf of Pastor Scott and the members of First Baptist Church, North Tulsa, we want you to know this is where the Holy Spirit leads. Yeah. And we thank him that he uh, encouraged you to come here today and, uh, and join us in this worship experience. And we pray that that's what it will be for you, a worship experience, experience. Uh, of the Lord. And we thank you for coming. We thank you for standing. If you are here without a church home, we invite you to join us here at First Baptist Church, North Tulsa, where the Spirit leads. Amen. Thank Amen. you for coming. And again, thank you for standing. Just uh, a couple announcements. Well, yeah, a couple announcements. First, just a reminder about the Everybody's Birthday Party on next Sunday. If you have not signed up yet, please take a moment before you leave the uh, church. There's a sign-up sheet out in the foyer. Hopefully, by now, you have heard from your team captain. If not, hopefully, they will continue to make contacts with you uh, this week. But it, regardless, sign up. Join us on next Sunday after immediately following service in Stall Nickel Hall for this wonderful event. Uh, fellowship event. Amen. All right. And then I have a community announcement. Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Alpha Tau Lambda Tulsa Alumni Chapter. Let me take a breath after all of that. Will host their annual health and wellness symposium on Saturday, September the 28th from 10 a.m. till 1 p.m. in Stall Nicker Hall. This event is open to the public. There will also be voters' registration table available. The number one killer of men is the prostate cancer. About one in 44 men will die of prostate cancer. With early diagnosis and treatment, prostate cancer is often highly curable. September is Prostate Awareness Month. The blue ribbon represents the awareness of prostate cancer. So govern yourselves accordingly. You've been invited to join the Alphas uh, here in Stallnaker Hall on September the 28th. Uh, there will be more um, announcements that will appear on the monitor, so uh, please uh, pay attention to those as well. Thank you. It's giving time. Yeah. Amen, amen. It's an opportunity for us to give back to the Lord what he has blessed us with and an opportunity for us to continue to do the work that God has called us to. Again, like I always like to say, no matter how much or how little you give, all of what you give, God can use and, uh, and will use to further his kingdom uh, on earth for us to do the work that he's called us to do. So if you would, please stand uh, as our ushers come uh, and take your directions from the ushers. Please start from the rear. I just want to thank you forever and ever and ever.
thank you for the opportunity to give back unto you the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. We pray uh, that the offering that has been given here in person and online will be used for the furtherance of thy kingdom. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said together, amen. 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 Praise God this morning. Praise God. How many know that the Lord is always with us? He guides us. He's our shepherd. He's our friend. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you for being there for us at all times, Lord God, and that your grace is always sufficient. No matter what we go through, Lord God, you are right there with us. Your rod. Your staff, it, 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 it corrects us. It comforts us. Yes. Lord God, we couldn't be yes. more thankful this morning. So we're here to worship you. The Lord is my shepherd, everybody. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. But not only that, defender behind me. Defender behind me. So I won't fear. I won't fear. Filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. My cup's overflowing. My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. Thank you, Lord. I won't fear. I won't fear. I won't fear. People of God say, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not alone. I am not alone. He's my comfort. Yes, he is. He's my comfort. And he always, always holds me close. He always guides me. He always guides me. Through mountains and valleys. Mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing. His joy is refreshing. And this is what it does. This is what it does. Restores my soul. Restores my soul. Mercy and goodness. Mercy and goodness. Gives me assurance. Gives me assurance. That one day. I'll see your glory. And I'll see his glory. Face to face. Face to face. Oh, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not alone. I am not alone. He Hallelujah, say it again. Hallelujah. 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 I am not alone. I no matter what I go through, he's always with me. He's my comfort. He's my comfort. Yes, he is. He's my comfort. And he Watch this, watch this. Your spirit. Your spirit lives within me. So I will walk. So I will walk in your peace. Your spirit. Your 
spirit lives within me. It's my victory. My victory. Watch this. My victory. Your spirit. Your spirit lives within so me. So I will walk in your so peace. I will walk in your peace. Your spirit. Your spirit lives within it's me. It's my victory. My victory. My victory. My victory. Your spirit. Your spirit lives within so me. So I will walk in your God bless you God bless your name bless your name we bless your name we bless your name God of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Yes, Lord. O God, my rock, my fortress, 
my strength and my redeemer. And let the people of God say amen. 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 Bless your word, Lord. Bless your word. Uh, as I prepare to move into my sermon, I ask you to be in prayer for my wife, your first lady. Uh, we were in the emergency room with her until about 11.30 last night. Uh, she had, had been in a great deal of pain for a couple of weeks, but uh, the Lord has fixed her through medicine. Amen. Uh, uh, she's watching online, and we did not leave Walgreens at 91st and Sheridan until 11.30 last night. Uh, I was sleeping in the chair in Walgreens, and she tapped me and said, you think you can drive home? I said, yeah, I think I, I, think I can make it. Amen. Uh, it got to the point where she was almost having to take care of me. My head was nodding so much. But, uh, but be in prayer for her. Amen. She is well uh, and on, uh, certainly on demand. Amen. Uh, I want to call our attention uh, this morning to Hebrews, uh, the 11th chapter. It seems I've been visiting uh, this area uh, for some period of time, but the Lord just keeps calling me back. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hebrews 11. I'm going to read the first three verses, uh, and then I'm going to skip uh, to verse 6. Hebrews 11, uh, 1 through 3, then I'm going to skip. Uh, the verse 6. I'm reading from the King James Version. Uh, follow along with me uh, as I read. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 6. This is probably one of my favorite verses in Scripture. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You may be seated in the Lord's presence and uh, pray with me as I preach from this thought, this topic, uh, aspects of faith. Uh, aspects of faith. Faith. Uh, this, this idea or all of this talk uh, about faith is very important. Uh, I shared on last week in my message that often when persons would come, uh, even the woman that came to Jesus with the issue of blood, whenever uh, Jesus would heal an individual, uh, his, his parting words uh, and dismissal would often be, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee well. So, so I began to just wrestle with that concept and uh, wrestle with that idea, uh, really, of faith. And listen, none of us uh, are really novices when it comes to the Word of God, being students of the Word of God. We've studied lessons on faith. We've probably given talks and taught Sunday school about faith. We uh, know all there is to know about faith, but guess what? None of us can fathom or understand the depths and the unsearchable riches of the mind of God. And so when it comes even to the concept of faith or even aspects and contours of faith, there's always some illumination. There is always some understanding that we can glean from the word of God, particularly as it relates to this idea called faith. Uh, a matter of fact, the Apostle Paul, when he talked about our salvation and how we are saved. He says that uh, we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead, uh, then we shall be saved. But if you keep going on down, Paul begins to explain to us how that confession and how uh, that regeneration and salvation come. He says, now faith, what? Comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so when we look at the Word of God, look at the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we discover very easily that faith is something that is very important. Have I got any witnesses here today? In fact, uh, Abraham is not only called the friend of God, but Abraham is called the father of faith and the father of the faithful. And it would behoove you and I to really wrestle with these aspects and contours of faith. What is faith? Faith uh, is simply believing God even though you have not seen God. 
faith, faith is believing that, that, that what is impossible with us uh, is very possible with God. Uh, faith is embracing and accepting God's word and not doubting. Faith is trusting God to divide the Red Sea. Uh, and listen, uh, the Red Sea is not just a literal episode uh, in the Old Testament, but all of us face some Red Seas in our life. We all face times in our life uh, where the enemy is on our back. We can't go to the left or the right, and even going forward does not look good. But we've got a testimony to say that God somehow in some way made a way for us to keep going when we look like we could not keep going. Faith is believing that God will bring down the walls of Jericho. And listen, the walls of Jericho are not just an experience in the Old Testament, but many of us face obstacles that we cannot climb over, that we cannot get under. But God has broken down the obstacles that even exist in our life. Faith is building an ark before it rains. And many of us need to have the faith of Noah. Uh, listen, uh, we need to have the faith uh, to build, uh, like Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, 24 through 27, we got to have the faith to build with a storm in mind. Jesus is saying, listen, uh, you are foolish if you wait and try to build an ark when it starts raining. You got to build with a storm in mind. Now, I'm not saying being pessimistic. What I'm saying is Jesus said, in this world, you'll have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I've already overcome the world. So since you know that tribulation is our lot in life, when we sign on to, with the Lord to follow him, you ought to start building like it's going to rain. So that when the winds begin to blow and the rains begin to descend, you are standing on the rock. Faith, faith is walking on water when Christ says come. Like Peter, there are many times in our life that God uh, is calling us to do things that don't make any sense. Uh, but we're afraid to step out on the unknown. Uh, we're afraid to step out on the foot of faith. Uh, but, but, just like, but just like Peter, uh, when the Lord says, come, uh, we, we need to just get out there and trust God to bring us to where he is. Faith is like Abraham being willing to sacrifice his only son. Sometimes God wants us to sacrifice something or at least be willing to give it up so he knows that we trust him more than we trust that. So what we understand, even from Romans 10, that faith is a gift, a choice, and a discipline. Uh, when I say faith is a gift, it says in Romans chapter 10, now faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Uh, Paul is dealing with the ergonomics of faith. He's dealing with how faith operates on the ear and how we come to salvation. He says faith uh, is like that spiritual Q-tip that comes uh, and clears out everything that's keeping us from hearing the call of God to salvation. So faith has to clear it out so you can hear the Lord calling you. So faith first is a gift. It is a gift of God. None of us, listen, I know, and we should do it. It says, come to Jesus just as you are, weary, wounded, and sad, and you'll find in him a resting place. But guess what? The only way you can actually come to him is for him to spiritually clean out your deaf ear because we are spiritually dead. And when he clears out that ear by the gift of faith, we're able to hear the Lord calling us, saying, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So after faith is a gift, faith then becomes a choice. So faith is a gift to save us, but then once we are saved and we're living day by day, we've got to continue to use our faith 
to trust in God when we face new circumstances and situations, right? Uh, we, we need to grow in grace and in knowledge of God so that our faith is nurtured, so that when we face trial after trial after trial, our faith is strong enough and we're able to choose faith over anything else. But then the great saints of the church would tell us that faith is also a discipline. It is a spiritual discipline along, along with prayer, along with uh, fasting, along with meditation, along with reading the word of God. Faith is a spiritual discipline. It should be uh, the very essence of your life. It should be something that you train yourself uh, to, to walk by faith and not by sight. Very simply, faith matters. I know that that terminology is very popular in our contemporary culture. Unless a whole lot of stuff matters. But understand, what really matters is faith. Voting matters. But if the vote don't go our way, faith matters. A whole lot of stuff matters. But when stuff don't go our way, you better have some faith. So as long as faith matters, it don't matter what happened because Jesus is the center and the circumference of our joy. So, so listen, the, the text tells us, uh, or it's tailored to teach us uh, a number of things. First of all, the text teaches us something about the proof of faith. Uh, it says, now faith is the substance, the promise of things hoped for. Now, now consider as we look at the proof of faith, first of all, the promise that comes before the proof. Don't, don't miss that, because that's what faith is all about. Uh, many of us want the proof before we embrace the promise. But the flow of the text is promise before proof. If I get proof before promise, that ain't faith. You don't get the evidence till you believe the promise. So it says, now faith is the substance or the promise of things hoped for. So whatever you're hoping for, you got to believe God has promised it and know God has promised it before it comes to fruition. Consider, uh, if you will, the great promises in the Bible. Uh, Genesis 3 and 15, Isaiah 53, uh, talk to us about uh, the promise uh, of pardon. Uh, it says in Genesis 3 and 15 that, that, that he will bruise uh, the head of, ser of, of the serpent. That, that, that is a promise of pardon. It says uh, in Isaiah uh, 53, he was wounded for our transgressions. Uh, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. There, there's promise of pardon in the word of God. So that means it don't matter uh, what the enemy says. Uh, the Bible says sin not. But if you sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That lets me know that God is going to pardon me. But then we get the promise of prayer. It says in Je Je Jeremiah uh, 33 and 3, he says, when you call, I'll answer. Uh, and tell you unsearchable things. Uh, now notice, there's no doubt in the text. He said, when you call, I will answer. Now, 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 now the conditional part is not him answering. The conditional part is if you call. The fact of the matter is, if you just call, he said, I will answer. He didn't say, I might, I, I might think about it. All you got to do is call, and I will answer. So it amazes me why we carry our burdens all by ourselves. You ought to take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there because he promised if you call, I'll answer. But then he gave a promise, even a provision. When the children of Israel were doubting uh, God's hand, the same hand that led them uh, out of Egypt and led them into the wilderness, they, they began to doubt that that hand uh, could feed them, but God uh, in Exodus 15 and 26 provided a whole lot of things, manna, uh, quail, uh, God provided water from a rock. Listen, I don't know what you're stressed and worried about, but, but the earth is the Lord's uh, and the fullness thereof. 
uh, li listen, uh, grandmama and grandpa knew that God uh, could take a menial chick and stretch it further uh, than, 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 listen, you, you, it don't matter what any individual's economic policy is. God got the greatest economic policy. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Listen. You can be blessed in a recession. You can have joy in a depression. Listen, God owns a cattle on a thousand hills. The silver and the gold belong to God. But then he gives the promise, the promise of peace. He says, whomever keeps their mind stayed on me, I will keep them in perfect peace. So you got to know something about the promise. Then the Lord will give you proof. Faith is the substance, promise of things hoped for. But then we get to the proof, the evidence of things not seen. Listen, a uh, renowned artist, Paul Gustav Gore, li lived from 1821 to 1883. And one day, uh, while traveling uh, throughout, throughout Europe, uh, he came to a border crossing and realized that he had lost his passport. He had lost his papers. And when he got up to the border uh, and was talking to uh, the border attendant, uh, the crossing guard, uh, he said, listen, uh, my name is Paul Gustav Gore. I'm a great artist. I have lost my identification. Uh, please let me through. Uh, the attendant said, listen, I would love to let you through, but there are a whole lot of folk who try to pretend to be somebody that they are not in order to get across. He said, but listen, I'm telling you, I am who I am. If you let me go across, I, I, you'll know who I am. He said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a test. He gave him a canvas and a pencil. And he told him, he said, if you are truly who you are, I need you to draw something. And, and Paul Gustav Gore began to draw so very eloquently and so very marvelously uh, that, 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 that the border uh, attendant said, uh, you, you, you have to be who you say you are because your work confirms your word. And listen, uh, this is the evidence that we have is that the work of God confirms his word. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. His work confirms his word. He said, he's our refuge and strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. His work confirms his word. When you were sick and God raised you up, his work confirmed his word. And so we see the proof of faith. But then secondly, we see, my friends, the people of faith. Verse 2, it says that the elders obtained a good report. I don't know about you, but I want that good report. Uh, and so, so what is that good report? Well, Hebrews 11 tells us what that good report is. Uh, that, 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 that good report uh, is when you leave the land where you are and go someplace not knowing where you're going uh, because God said go. Uh, that, that good report is, is when uh, you get to be the age of Sarah, the Bible says, and God say you're going to have a child, and you laugh, but then you realize God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ever ask or think. And so understand that, 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 that when we look at the people of faith, we, we want to have uh, this, this good report uh, that the elders obtain. Listen, this good report is when we have faith in God during our problems. Abraham and the elders in Hebrews 11 faced a lot of problems, but they prayed faith, faced those problems with faith. Uh, we have that good report uh, when we have faith like Job and have faith in God even in our pain. Uh, listen, uh, Job uh, had almost uh, lost his faith, but his faith was firm. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job went on not only to have a firm faith, but, but vibrant faith. He said, listen, I know that my Redeemer lives, uh, and no matter what I'm going through, I know one day I I'm going to see my Redeemer. I wonder have I got somebody here today that no matter what you go through in life, all you want to do is see the face of Jesus. All you want to do is see the one who lived and died for you to touch his hands, to... Listen, Abraham, Job, 
finally showed us that reward of faith that obtains a good report when God gave him a double blessing. But then you also got to have faith uh, during trial like Daniel uh, in order to obtain a good report. But then thirdly, uh, the text teaches us uh, about the power of faith. Verse 3 says, after we get past the proof of faith in verse 1, the people of faith in verse 2, we get an object lesson or a lesson on the power of faith. He says, when we look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, we have a God who brought everything into existence out of nothing. That is the foundation of faith. The foundation of faith is that the same God that can bring something out of nothing uh, can certainly bring something out of your life. Uh, it never ceases to amaze me that God can bless us over and over again. We can sit in church and say, every time I look around, he keeps on blessing me. Uh, but then as soon as we face a crisis or a trial, uh, we don't know or trust that God can do it. But listen, if God can create everything out of nothing, he can show enough, bring you out of your situation. If God uh, can bring his son into the world through a virgin by the name of Mary, if God can raise that son from the grave, what makes you think that God can't put food on your table, clothes on your back, turn around that wayward child? Listen, God is good. But then in John chapter 1 and verse 3, he talks about the power of faith and how uh, all created order, and even in Colossians 1 and 16, is upheld and sustained by that same power. And listen, we don't have faith in faith. We have faith in God. And because we have faith in God, we know that God can do just what God said he would do. So listen, verse 1 uh, tells us something about the proof of faith. Verse 2, the people of faith. Verse 3, the power of faith, but then verse 6, which I said is one of my favorite verses, talks about uh, the practice of faith. Uh, faith is not simply a cognitive uh, exercise. Listen, we, we can know all of the aspects of faith, but at some point, we've got to put faith into practice. And in order for faith to be put into practice, God has to allow or permit or even cause some things to come into our life that make us put faith into operation. Uh, again, our faith is in God. The text says without faith, it is impossible to please God. I wonder how many of us live our lives wanting to please God. Uh, we try to please everybody else, but I want you to know something. It's hard to know how to please other folk because they keep changing what makes them happy. But, but God is not wavering. God says without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I don't know about you, I want to please God. And God said I got to have faith in order to please him. He said your faith brings me pleasure. But then he also says in order for your faith uh, to bring me pleasure, I need you as a person. In other words, whomever comes to me, right? Your faith as, as, as simply cognitive mental knowledge uh, is not enough to please me. I need you to actually come to me. Without faith, it's impossible to please me. And once you got faith, you got to come to me and realize that I am a rewarder of those that diligently seek me. There was a young lady, a uh, young girl, uh, who, who was gifted uh, from her parents a, a brand new puppy. She bought that puppy, and everywhere she went, uh, that puppy was just following her and chasing her down. She tried to run. The puppy would come run and chase her. She'd come home from school. The puppy would run and meet her uh, at the bus stop. Uh, she, she would go out in the backyard to play. Uh, the puppy uh, would come and run wherever she was. Finally, she said, you know what? The next time that puppy comes chasing after me, I'm going to give that puppy a treat. She gave that puppy a treat, and the puppy still kept coming. 
Now notice the puppy was coming and chasing her before she gave the treat. The puppy just wanted to spend time with her. The Bible said without faith, it's impossible to please God. But whoever comes to him must believe that he is. You ought to come to God just because of who he is. And when God sees you coming to him just because of who he is, he'll open up his hand and give you the treats that we're all looking for. Listen, uh, you've got to incorporate various types of faith into your life. Uh, you, you need the yet will I faith of Job. Job said in Job 13 and 15, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Uh, you need to have that yet will I faith. But then you've got to have a, a, a but if not faith uh, of the Hebrew boys, uh, who when they were cast into the fiery furnace told the king, said, listen, God is able to deliver us, but even if he don't, listen, somebody got to have that but if not faith. But then you also got to have uh, that yet will I rejoice faith of the prophet Habakkuk. The prophet said, even though there's a famine, even though the economy is down, even though there's no herd in the stall, yet will I rejoice. See, a whole lot of us, our praise is predicated on our condition. And so if our condition is not right, worship is dead. Because our praise is predicated on our condition. But guess what? My praise ain't predicated on my condition. My praise ain't predicated on my circumstance. My praise is based on the goodness of God. A God that sits high. A God that looks low. And God has taught me, whatever be time, God will take care of me. But I ain't done yet. You not only need to have a yet will I faith, a but if not faith, a yet will I rejoice faith. But like Peter in Luke chapter 5, you got to have a nevertheless faith. They had been toiling all night trying to catch fish. And the Lord said, I want you to toss it on the other side. Peter said, God, we've been doing it all night, but since you told us, nevertheless, I'm going to do what you said. Sometimes we got to have that nevertheless faith. When we've tried and we've tried, when we prayed and we prayed, when we've cried and we cried all night long, listen, don't give up. Have that nevertheless faith. Keep trusting God. Keep pressing up uh, the king's highway. Because God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You've got to trust God to have faith for the future. Faith sees the answer triumphing over the problem. Uh, Dr. James Forbes, in a sermon I was just listening to this morning, uh, talks about there's power in the problem. And many of us don't want to deal or face problems because we think problems are there to break us. But Dr. Forbes reminds us there's power in the problem. Listen, God does not will everything, but God does will something out of everything. I think I ought to say that again. God does not will everything, but God does will something out of everything. That's what Romans 8 and 28 says. All things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Listen, God permits, uh, sometimes God allows, sometimes God causes, but no matter what, uh, God will will something good out of everything. Uh, listen, uh, one of the reasons that makes Michael Jordan and Tom Brady uh, the greatest of all times is that with Tom Brady, it didn't matter what other ten people you put on the field, and with Michael Jordan, it didn't matter what other four persons you put on the court, that they had this ability to wheel whoever you gave them to victory. And even though they had the ability to wheel others to victory, they still experienced some losses. But I've got some good news. 
I'm going to settle that greatest uh, 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 all-time argument right here and right now. The greatest of all times uh, is Mary's baby. Uh, the, 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 the greatest of all time. Uh, the only undefeated one is Jesus. The lily of the valley. The bright and morning star. He's never lost and he never will. The Bible says that the greatest of all time died. Didn't he die? On a hill far away. The greatest of all time. I ain't thinking about Buddha, Muhammad, Confucius. The greatest died on a hill. They buried him in a viral grave. But the greatest, not Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time, got up with all power on heaven, all power on earth, in his hands. And guess what? He was, is, and always will be the greatest. That's why faith says be steadfast unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing this, that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The doors of the church are open. We extend Christ to you on this day. The doors of the church are open. The invitation was in the sermon. It said in order to come to Christ, you first got to believe and have faith that he is, that Christ is the Son of God, that he did die on the cross, and that God did raise him from the dead. But the good news is that not only was he raised from the dead, not only did he ascend to the Father, but he is coming back again for those who believe. And so if you don't know Christ for the pardon of your sins, we offer that relationship to you. We extend the hand of Christ to you. We extend the hand of the church to you. That, may, that way you can grow and come to know the Lord for yourself and come to know the Lord together as Christ believers. Is there one today? Exceedingly Abundantly, above all. Is there one? All you could ask or think, according to the power that. That's what he said he would do, and he's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. How many believe that he's able to do what he says he's going to do today? Amen. Don't you dare give up on God. Come on, church. How many singing? God is able to do. God is able to do. What he said. That's what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill. Hey, every promise. Promise to you. Don't give up on God. y'all. Ain't he able? He's One more time. Able. One more time. God is able to do. God is able to do. Everything he said that he would do. He said he would do. The 
promise before the proof. He's born of fulfilled. Every promise. Every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because you know that he won't. That he won't give up on you. He's able. He's able. nor forsake us. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, God, as we receive your blessing of dismissal, God, we pray that the grace of God, the peace of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit would rest, rule, and abide with each of us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us sing like we know it. Yes, sir.